Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are happy to be here and to worship God one more time. The two songs that we will do today are songs that testify about the goodness of God and the fact that we have to depend on him for everything that we do, especially in these trying times. God bless you. Worship with me, please. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, how long? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Where would I? Listen to this. Hey, he kept my enemies away he let the sun shine through a cloudy day he wrapped me in the cradle of his arms when he knew that I've been battered by the storm so if it had not been for the Lord on Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Oh, he kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He wrapped me in the cradle of his arms. But I'll be battered by the storm, so if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. You see, I thought number one would truly be me. I thought that I could be what I want to be. I thought I can build on life sinking sand, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought I could do a lot on my own. And I thought I can make it all the day long. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. You see, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even walk without you holding 
holding my hand Lord, the mountains, they're too high And my valleys, they're wide So down on my knees Is where I learn, I learn to stand You see, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I think I'll make Jesus my all in all. And if I'm, I'm in trouble, on his name I call If I didn't If I didn't trust him I'd be less of Less of a man Cause I can't even walk Without you holding my hand Somebody lift your hands and sing with me. I can't even walk. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, my mountains, they're too high. Yeah, and my valleys so wide. Said I'm down on my knees. I learn to stand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Bless the Lord. Can't even walk. And right now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a young lady who is going to sing about the name of Jesus. There is a name, Sister Joanna George.
my soul saw and finally see that face of Jesus and be with him forevermore. That name is Jesus. Oh, how I love him, the one who gave his life. Because of love, so unconditional, I can have life eternally. Let me begin by taking a moment to wish all of the fathers, all of the men, a happy Father's Day. I remind you that fathers hold a very special place in society, a much higher place than for which they are given credit. Today it is my goal to encourage and to remind us, all of us, of the importance of fathers. The duties, the responsibilities, the respect, and the dignity that goes with the role of a father as it relates to the extremely important and vital part that we play in our families and in our nations today. I would like to share with you a little something that I thought was uh, kind of humorous if you'd bear with me. The story goes like this. It says, when the good Lord was creating fathers, he started with a tall frame. And a female angel nearby said, what kind of father is that? If you're going to make children so close to the ground, why would you put fathers up so high? He wouldn't be able to shoot marbles without kneeling, tuck a child into bed, without bending, or even kiss a child without a lot of stooping. God smiled and said, yes, but if I make him child size, who would children have to look up to? When God made the father's hands, they were large and sinewy. The angel shook her head sadly and said, Do you know what you're doing? Large hands are clumsy. They can't manage diaper pins, small buttons, rubber bands or on ponytails, or even remove splinters. God smiled and he said, I know. But they're large enough to hold everything that a young boy empties from his pockets at the end of the day, yet small enough to cup a child's face. Then God molded long, slim legs and broad shoulders, and the angel nearly had a heart attack. Boy, this is the end of the week, all right. Do you realize that you've just made a father without a lap? 
How is he going to pull a child close to him without the child falling between his legs? God smiled and he said, A mother needs a lot. A father needs strong shoulders to pull a sled, balance a child on a bicycle, or hold a sleepy hand on the way home from the circus. God was in the process of creating two of the largest feet anyone had ever seen. When the angel could no longer contain herself. That's not fear. Do you honestly think those large boats are going to dig out of bed early in the morning when the baby cries? Or walk through a birthday party without crushing at least three of the guests? God smiled. They'll work. You'll see. They'll support a small child who wants to ride a horse, or scare off mice in the basement, or display shoes that will be a challenge to fill. God worked through the night, giving the father few words, but a firm, authoritative voice. Eyes that saw everything, but remained calm and tolerant. Finally, almost as an afterthought, he added tears. Then he turned to the angel and said, Now, are you satisfied that he can love as much as a mother? This morning, I would like to ask the question, what kind of father does God expect us to be? Psalms 127 verse 1 reads, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. Today is Father's Day. We celebrate fathers throughout the world. You know, I must take a, a moment to give some personal shout outs to some of the fathers that I've had, many of who have gone on. I think of Daddy Clark. I think of Brother David Ellis. I think of my bishop, Master Michael Bacchus. I think of my friend, Minister Ken Saul, and my other friend, Minister Robert Ambrose. Great examples of fathers who've been very influential in my life. You know, that's a very different from moms. We fathers have to be the strong and emotional ones. Even when things seem to be falling to pieces, we are expected to always be the one to be able to make good rational decisions instead of the emotional ones 
that moms make. We are to provide for our families. Matter of fact, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8 reminds us, if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Infidel. So the question is, does that mean that we are to forever to provide for our children? Is that what God would have us do? Certainly, we would want to help our children out. When my children were born, I wish they would have come with an owner's manual. So much I didn't know then and quite honestly, still don't. So where would we get a good example, a great example of fatherhood, of what a father should be? What do we call God? What makes up the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. So let's see for a few minutes how God handles parenting. After all, He is our Heavenly Father. First, let us establish what God intended for man. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, we read, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the ear, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. He created them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So you see, ladies, and gentlemen, please take note, because you too need to get it. God trusted us so much that he gave us dominion, dominion over every living thing. God has and still has high hopes for us. He even trusted us to name the animals. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 tells us, And the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from Adam made he a woman and brought her unto Adam. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Hey, think about it. We even named woman. You know, there's no question that God loves us all very much as his children. 
God has great patience, definitely a quality every good father needs. Psalms 145 and verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. You know, sometimes as dads, we're quick to anger. And thinking about it sometimes too much so. Dads aren't like God in that they aren't perfect. We can and do make mistakes. I personally wish that I could have a lot of do-overs with my girls. A lot of things I would do differently. I regret those mistakes. But it makes me strive even harder today to be the best example that I can for my daughters and for my grandchildren. Understand this. It is one thing to give our children instruction, but it is quite another to set an example for them to follow. I believe that most fathers today are compassionate. We would do anything for our children. And that may not always be the right thing to do. Do you know that dads or fathers get carried away at their children's baseball games? So much so that they attack the coaches, the referees, and even each other sometimes. Some go as far as to, to have it out at the school because they don't think that their children are being treated fairly. But ask yourself, is that productive? Is that being protective of your child? Or is it really, simply put, plain stupid? Even when our children may be in the wrong, we still fight for them. You see, although it is important that we protect our families and our family members, it is far more important to provide an example, a godly example to our children. Yet, if we would look carefully, we would see that we don't always do a good job of that. Now do we? How does God handle it when his children make mistakes? God's love for us as his children can never fail. But we don't see God going out to confront someone else over his children's mistakes. God confronts us. He realizes that we are the ones responsible for whatever mess we've gotten ourselves into. He is here and there to provide love and support. So whenever you struggle or whenever you struggle trying to get yourself out of the mess that you're in, it is because God wants you to learn a lesson. He told me God will sometimes even discipline you. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 5 says, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6 says, Because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. 
if you are disobedient to God, you will get punished. Can we all agree here today that one of the reasons the world is in the shape that it is in is because of the lack of discipline. Earthly fathers are feeling miserably in this regard. Fathers, here is a scripture I want you to take from our time today, if nothing else sticks. Meditate on this scripture. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Fathers, you have a right to decide what happens in your house. Not only a right, but a responsibility to God and to your family for what happens in your house. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to rot, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You know, most parents like to concentrate on the first part of that text. But today I want to draw your attention to the last part, the latter part. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. In my case, I was brought up that way. Then I strayed. But that was on me, not on my parents. Some of you may not have been brought up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord like you should have been. However, when you are grown, it's on you. No longer can any of us blame bad childhoods or bad parenting. After we reach that age, we remove out, get married, have our own children. It's now our turn to be the fathers, the heads of the house. Not in a domineering, egotistical way, but in a gentle, loving way. It is your time to provide for your family, to discipline the children, and to be the example that God expects you to be. Anything less, anything less, means you don't love them as much as you claim. When you constantly bail your kids out, when you don't set godly standards that are strictly followed in your home, you're not being the example God wants you to be. If you condone your child's bad behavior by supporting it unconditionally, then you're not only failing them, you're failing God as well. Men, if you have children or stepchildren, I pray that you will not only be an example for them, but that you will be the godly example that you were created and called to be. Fathers, I've said all this to say this. The fact is we only get one opportunity to father our children. 
So let's ask God for guidance to do it the right way the first time. Again, I wish all of the men, all of the fathers, a happy Father's Day as I pray God continues to abundantly bless you and yours. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.